Now, having watched the movie Civil War, I feel with my background and my current situation that I can give you guys a little heads up as to what I thought of that movie and what I thought of the choices that they made. I joined the military in 1998, the British military. I thought I'd post a quick video. What you're getting is a very unique perspective, a perspective from myself, a photographer, pretty interesting history. Um, I joined the military in 1998, the British military. I was 18 years old and I stayed in the military for a total of 18 years. And the only reason that I left the military is because I emigrated here in America as an American with a history of frontline combat British um, military experience. So let's go ahead then and talk about the photography equipment used in the movie Civil War. Now, first of all, I loved it. Two different types of photographic media. One person taking digital, the other person taking film. These days, people are choosing to use film photography. It is something which has come back, made a resurrection because people love the media. Is it the best choice in a high stress situation where you need to make and capture that shot quickly and effectively and guarantee that you get that shot? Probably not. Probably not. It's, I mean, I'm sure all film photographers would agree with you that advancing the shutter by yourself, manually composing your composition, focusing and then releasing the shutter in a high stress situation when you've never been there before would be difficult to achieve that composition, to get the exposure correct, to make everything work as it should, especially with the cameras depicted in that movie. One of the people that they show is a younger photographer, new to the game, and she has an FE2, a Nikon FE2. Now this is the Nikon FG. So let's talk about the FE2 then. I mean, this is the FG, this is my FG. I have no desire to buy an FE2. I just actually sold my F3, I'm not interested. But the FE2 is better than the FE and obviously better than the FG because the FE2 has a shutter speed of one over 4,000. And what does that mean from a film photographer's perspective, trying to capture motion, trying to stop motion, that shutter speed combined with a good understanding of the triangle of exposure, will get action stopped. Boom, one over 4,000. A titanium shutter on the FE2 would totally do the job. And that's what you need in a situation where people are running around, bullets are flying. You want to ensure that your shutter speed is set fast enough, bang, that you can stop motion. And that's why the FE2 would be a good choice in that movie. The main journalist in the movie, Kirsten Dunst, does suggest to the younger journalist that she hadn't seen those cameras in a while. Of course she hadn't. You know, that's a camera from the 80s, the FE2. Yeah, of course she wouldn't have seen it in a while. Why would people use that in a journalist situation? It doesn't make sense. It's film. Why would you not use digital? Digital makes sure that you capture everything as it should. The camera is going to do everything for you. But no, that journalist decided to take her father's cameras to war to take pictures. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's the tools she chose. My first tour to Afghanistan, my first tour to Afghanistan, to Kabul, I had an L96. That is a single shot rifle. Much like an SLR camera, it's a single shot situation. You have to compose, you have to check your target, and when you pull the trigger, you better make sure you hit. One shot. You see what I'm getting at? If you are able to use your tool effectively, then you will get that shot. And if you can't get that shot, you have no business being in that situation. But as again, Kirsten Dunst's character in the movie suggests a hit rate of one in 30. That means one shot out of 30 when you're using film might be a keeper. That's the way I heard it anyway. And one shot in 30, if you're taking hundreds of shots, one shot as a photojournalist is enough. One shot should be enough to depict what is going on in that situation. And with that FE2, one over 4,000 shutter speeds, boom, she captured stop motion, got that picture, made that image, created that composition with perfect light so the rest of the world can see what's actually going on 
in that moment with an SLR camera. Is it possible? 100% yes, it's possible. If you shoot film and you've shot enough rolls through your camera of choice, you will be able to, even under stressful situations, probably be able to get one shot in 30 in focus with great composition. Is it possible? Yes. Is it advisable? Probably not. You probably, in, just for me, this is my choice. This would be my choice. And I'll probably get a lot of negative feedback for this. This is my Nikon D800. It's a full frame camera, 36 megapixel. It is absolutely built like a tank. It is pretty heavy. So to carry it around in a war situation would be difficult. The types of lenses that it needs, full frame lenses, those optics would be difficult. But so what? When I went to Afghanistan, I was carrying so much freaking kit. I looked like a ninja turtle, okay? So much weight on my back. The rifle that I carried was an SA-80 with a UGL, underslung grenade launcher, which means it's very, very front heavy. And you fire grenades out of it, and you can also fire five, five, six rounds, but I still managed it. If it was me and I had the choice, I would choose a camera that had a high megapixel so I could crop in, that was weather sealed, that held a charge in its batteries for long enough that I only needed to take a few, that used a dual card slot, SD and CF, and quick bayonet lens mount fitting, build in flash, and situations that you might want to use that flash. If you're around base and you just want a picture of the team, you don't want to be carrying loads of lighting equipment with you. you make an image and get some of those awesome paparazzi vibes. You guys, in the movie, the main journalist character is using a Sony um, A7R. Full frame, mirrorless, beautiful, top of the range Sony camera with the best optics ever. And that's what you should probably use if you're a journalist, if you're a photo journalist on the ground to get those emotional looks on the individual's faces. I mean, that's what I've got right now and that's what I'd use. Um, in the movie, Kirsten Dunst, she actually uses a Leica lens on one of her cameras. A lot of people are like, why is she using Leica? Because Leica create beautiful images. The Now, when I first deployed as an infantry soldier, when I was a kid, all those initial years, this was all that was available. And this is probably what I would have chosen back then. Now, look at the size of this. This is the Nikon D2HS. This is my Nikon D2HS. Now this has an insane shutter speed. Nifty 50, capture the whole scene, boom. My experience in the military was all frontline infantry, teeth, arms, combat experience for my operational tours. I was fortunate enough to have been in the military during some major conflicts, you know, from the end of the 90s uh, to the mid 2000s, a lot went down. Afghanistan, I deployed to Afghanistan twice. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the Balkans because that was still kicking off in the 90s. That was some of my early deployments, Bosnia, Kosovo. Um, and I can tell you this from experience. Combat situations are extremely stressful. And now, as somebody who's breaking back into photography, to combine those two elements, combat and photography, and achieve results that you could go ahead and publish in the worldwide media platforms, I'm sure is extremely difficult. The people, the journalists who were embedded in our sections, in our platoons, did a great job. And I have firsthand experience of how those teams worked. Now, having watched the movie Civil War, I feel with my background and my current situation that I can give you guys a little heads up as to what I thought of that movie and what I thought of the choices that they made and how they decided to depict those roles. My photography is pretty, is pretty basic. Um, I've been doing it a while, but as far as capturing some of the elements that war photographers capture nowadays, massive respect for those people, for the ability that they have to control their tools, keep a level head and still manage to get the shot that depicts exactly what is going on in that war zone so that the rest of the world can see what is happening, so that the rest of the world can decide when they cast their votes, give a thumbs up to that government that's deciding on that war zone, that's 
making changes in that area or whether they decide to move against. The only way we get that information is through journalists taking pictures and making videos and doing interviews on the ground. So let's talk about civil war. A little brief spoiler introduction. It's not a spoiler. It's actually the movie. The movie follows a group of journalists who are attempting to cross America, which is in the midst of a civil war, in order to interview the president. The president is someone in the movie that does not want to be interviewed, who is um, on his third term as president in the United States. So if you know anything about terms in America, then you know that that's a little bit kooky. So it's about their journey to get to the president. And of course, all of the issues on the way of trying to negotiate and navigate an America which has become lawless. As someone with military experience and as someone who's lived in America but has an external perspective because I'm not from here, I could see them happening. 100% I could see that happening. I'm not going to spoil it, but I could see it happening. The scene on the farm where the two journalists get captured and they run into just some strangers dressed in combat fatigues. I could see that happening. The scene at the end in the White House. Oh my goodness. 100%. Amazing. I thought Civil War did a great job in showing how that actually goes down. How people react. The fear. The palpable fear that comes out of it. Doesn't matter how well you're trained. So that is my take on the movie Civil War. That is my take on photojournalism. I mean, I know it's wishy-washy, I'm all over the place, but it's something that I hold quite dear because it's a huge part of my history, both the military and now the photography. I feel they kind of mold together. I would be a terrible photojournalist because I just want to get involved in the action. It would be relatively fun being in the action and doing that. At the end of the day, the movie shows people putting themselves in harm's way in order to show the world, the public, what is actually going on in the world, in that situation, so that the public can make their informed decision on their votes and what to do about the situation. That is all journalists do. They depict reality, or they should depict reality, send that reality back. They should be non-biased, fly on the wall, in the action, making images, making videos, taking interviews about what's going on right now. And Civil War did just that. They did it through the medium of film and they did it through the medium of digital. Both are great. All they had in Vietnam, yo, was film. All they had in the Falklands War was film. These days, they have digital. Now, this is an old DSLR. This is my Nikon D800. I'm not going to upgrade from this. I absolutely love it. It does everything I need it to do, and I love it. I'm not going mirrorless. I like my old D800. I like my D700. This is why I'm keeping them. But you are able to achieve greatness with film. It is possible to use film to stop motion and capture beautiful compositions. It's possible to use film to show people what is going on in the world right now. There are beautiful film stocks in the world right now. Beautiful film stocks still being made that can depict and show exactly what's going on. Another thing that I loved about Civil War that I loved is that all the images shown with film were black and white. Could you imagine? Everything you shoot is in black and white. I love that because when you remove the distraction of color, of blood, of gore, and exchange that for contrasty monochrome, black and white, HP5 vibes, then you're getting a real depiction of what's going on, of those people's faces, of the emotions, just in my opinion. Civil War was a great movie. One of my favorite movies I think I've ever seen. I appreciate you guys making it. Thank you for making the effort to show both film and digital. Sony and Nikon, two great brands. Sorry, Canon, you didn't get a look in. But Leica also got a look in with their lenses. Thank you guys for stopping by. Go and see Civil War. If you're a photographer or a budding photographer or a budding photojournalist, go and see that movie. If you want to be a soldier, go and see that movie. Some of those combat scenes, insane. Thanks for stopping by. I will see you guys on the next one.